I have my answer. Okay, well, do you want to give it? I guess I'll give a little introduction. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. give the introduction. <laughs> I have my answer. <laughs> All right, well, if you guys are following us on Instagram or Facebook, uh, congratulations, because you might know what we're doing here, which is we posted a photo the other day to ask us anything, and we are accepting those questions on our Facebook wall and definitely being influenced by the ones that have the most likes. And uh, we're going to do this experiment while we're all together, home in Georgia, healthy, happy, and wealthy. Mm. Wealthy and gratitude and appreciation, baby. So we want to give that gift back to you and maybe inspire you and encourage you to get some of that in your life. Um, that being said, the question with the most likes as of now, since we posted that photo, was from Rachel Waterfill. Can we firstly give honor Rachel Waterfill? Nah. I remember Rachel uh, several years ago when she was messaging me on Facebook saying she had like some interest in the Raw Bras or something like that and uh, <laughs> several years later she came on her first retreat and what a blessing it was that she took that little step of faith and came on a retreat because now I would consider Rachel a really good friend. Me too. And I'm so I feel so blessed to have her in our lives. Yeah, for sure. A really good friend of Diana's as well and I, uh, Diana just gave her a, a Point your finger in the air with the thumb. Left thumb, too. <laughs> Just a sweet little girl from Kentucky that found her way to a private island off the coast of Panama with us for a week. Maybe we'll even put a picture up while we're talking about her. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she, she, and she came on what I would say was one of our most radical retreats in the sense of the uh, intimacy and the rawness. I mean, we were living on, uh, yeah, Rachel knows all about it. Anyways, her question also has to do with the retreat. So thank you for letting us be able to advertise by answering this question, Rachel. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, if all the stars were aligned and cost weren't a factor, what would be your ideal retreat? Talk about mm -hmm. location, number of attendees, special guest activities, etc. Wow. Yeah, so when I heard this question, immediately the answer came to my mind and that would be to spend a week-long retreat in the Amazon rainforest Ooh. with uh, preferably an indigenous tribe uh, that we don't even speak the same language but have a group of about 10 of us go down there, sp spend a week um, really relying on God in fear of, I imagine if we spent a week in the Amazon we would be scared. <laughs> um, you know, all sorts of crazy exotic animals wandering around and um, ever since I was a little, a little child, I wanted to uh, visit the Amazon. <laughs> so that would be my answer. Hmm. That's good to know. I'm happy Rachel asked this question. I wasn't expecting mm -hmm. that answer. I was expecting something else. It would need to involve some hunting, though, like maybe some like wild boar hunting or mm. fishing or getting uh, eaten by prana when I pee in the river of the Amazon. Uh. <laughs> It's probably a psychological term for wanting yourself no. to be. <laughs> no, I wouldn't actually want that. Uh, for me, it would definitely be somewhere where the mountains meet the ocean in a tropical destination um, with a group of about 12 people who are very willing, not only willing, but wanting to get very fun comfortable who've come on this retreat to soak it all up, to leave nothing behind, and really experiment full-heartedly with this idea of transparency and letting whatever, thing, whatever comes up come out. Um, and of course, a foundation to the success of this retreat would have to be uh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, um, just to have God in my heart and just blessing me with joy and love for one another, because without the intention of love, then um, a retreat, a, gr a growth from a retreat isn't possible. And also, um, health. To simply be appreciative for our health, meaning that everyone on the retreat is healthy and feeling very physically capable. With those two things, uh, or with those three or four things, I feel like a retreat would be unavoidable success. Mm. Yeah, and um, for me, it's kind of, uh, I have a different answer. I thought these guys were going to get to first, but I kind I do believe, in a way, that our uh, retreats, the way they are, are ideal. That whoever has signed up and the locations that we have picked, that, like, as Timothy alluded to and Nathaniel, that we are divinely led here. 
and we make sure to pray for that guidance and uh, I think God has put us at the right places at the right time with the right people in the right situations and uh, I feel like they have been ideal. But that being said, for the entertainment value of the question, uh, let's see an ideal, another ideal retreat in the future, I would guess, I'm thinking something along the lines of like a really fancy yacht. Hmm. Um, like probably somewhere like in the Maldives with a bunch of people that are w good surfers. They are probably better than me actually at surfing. And once again, I really love Tim Nathaniel's idea of kind of being uh, being driven by fear and being led by how Timothy said by the Holy Spirit but to just like put ourselves in some crazy situations with waves and then like find a nice lagoon to sleep in at night under the stars like with calm water so we wouldn't be feeling seasick and for our food that Diana and some other women were prepping our ceviche of the big fish that we caught off the boat <laughs> and maybe even go off the boat every once in a while to get some wild animals and coconuts on some of the islands um, so just to really like eat off the land, kind of be uh, dependent upon what God provides, whether it's a huge fish or like what Alan said, a wild boar or a crazy deer, a crazy island deer, and uh, ceviche that up, and kebab it up in between our surf sessions and raw honesty sessions where we connect over some very fun, comfortable times. Great question. That was fun. Mm -hmm. That was fun. You should try it. What would your ideal uh, Rob Ross retreat look like? <laughs> In the number of attendees, I would say just enough where the surf wasn't crowded. So I think like, um, I think 12 to 15, 12. I like, tw I like that number 12, actually. It's kind of like the 12 apostles. Seems like a, a special number. Man, I, I notice I keep wanting to pull out my iPhone and check it during a video. What? Oh, Man, you mean like it. your? Oh, I am Are checking you? the iPhone. But I'm checking, not like I'm not scrolling through the news feed. I'm looking at oh, Rachel's question. Man, we gotta be, we gotta be careful about that, man. That's dangerous stuff. Oh, highly addictive. Yeah, it's a real addiction. I was just thinking the other day to throw a little something, a perspective in there. I was listening to one of Daniel Vitalis' podcasts, and he was uh, alluding to the idea that how a lot of our civilization is piggybacked off uh, slave labor, and how the idea that these iPhones are being made by kind of a slave type of industry. And I was thinking, do you think that this phone takes on a slave type of energy where when something's made, with the slavery energy that we become a slave to it. And then I started thinking about that with uh, cotton. And I was like, wait a minute. People, especially probably when my parents were kids, and still to this day, people are a slave to their clothes. And then from houses and buildings and homes, we become a slave to where we live. Uh, just some other perspective. Maybe I'll give some ideas to uh, ask us our next question. Ask us anything. Uh, we might do a video close to a video a day or maybe six, five a week. Who knows? We're going to see how it goes, but uh, comment below. On another note, if you want to know what my ideal retreat looks like, you should watch the movie Apocalypto. <laughs> Not quite that extreme, but that's one of my favorite movies. I just wanted to uh, plug that movie in there because it's a great movie. Man, it sounds like you're really ready to tap into some primitive hunting. <laughs> yeah. He, I think he wants to go catch one of these little deer running around here with his bare hands. Uh, well, he did. I tried that the other day. Yeah, our sister came out, and there's like a baby deer out here, and they only comes out with a knife. I'm like, uh... That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our, our sister... I want, I want, let's go back to the story for a second. So our sister calls it. She's like, hey, if y'all want to see a baby deer, there's one inside our house. So Nathaniel's like, okay, let's get the knife. And uh, he gets this knife. It's like this big. And... Yeah, we, I guess right now we are very interested in uh, providing or, you know, killing um, our own meat that we consume. That, that, air, that uh, knife can apparently cut through an airplane door. Yeah, not, it's not like I was having fun or like wanting to get a kick out of killing an animal. I just, uh, I'm really into the idea of harvesting our own food. Yeah, and I think it's a very compassionate thing to do is to um, harvest your own food, especially when it comes to animals. I think the least compassionate thing that you can do is just uh, continue to talk about what is or what is not compassionate without actually trying it ourselves. Yeah, if you're eating animals, I highly encourage you to try to kill one yourself. Did that camera just turn off or is that just the noise? I think it's on. Um, but yeah, you may, instead of... I'll have it feed on camera. Is it? Is it still on? Yeah, it's on. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Self-conscious. But yeah, instead of hiring a, instead of hiring a hitman to kill your food, I encourage you to go try to kill it yourself. 
Yes, and uh, also back to the idea of the retreat. <laughs> Ideal retreat. We do have some dreamlike retreats coming up. Seriously, three places we have never been that I think we've always been led to go. Uh, the Virgin Islands coming up January 2nd to the 6th, and that looks like it's going to be a full, a full package right there. Uh, then we got New Zealand in February and uh, Australia in April. Somewhere probably north of Sydney and between there and Byron Bay. So uh, hit us up. Lead us in the right direction and join the retreat, baby. RobGraws at gmail.com. And, and only hit us up if you're ready, like ready to start experimenting with allowing yourself to be seen and for you to uh, express yourself to others. If, honesty, if you're ready t- for some honesty. You know, Tim, you mentioned a second ago about one of the most neglected forms of compassion was ha- hiring a hitman to get your meat or just talk about it. Yeah. And when we're in the age of doing, I like what you said on that one podcast from our Australian friend Cameron Neal about one of the most neglected forms of love is uh, sharing our resentments with each other. Mm. I like that a lot. I like yeah. I like you, Timothy. I love uh, you. Thank you. I need that today. <laughs> I need some love in my life today. We love him. Tell him. So if you watched it all the way to this end of this video, say I love you, Timothy. Wow. I love you, Timothy. I love you, Timothy. I love you guys. Thanks.